experience with A and D last and solos in combination mm -hmm. uh, with other lower strings. And uh, now we change to uh, to the new El Canon. Um, how was how was this for you? Was you uh, was there a lack of something or was it just uh, straightforward? How you observed this combination when you suddenly combine these uh, uh, strings with with each other? Um, no, a, a lack of anything, of nothing uh, was there. It was just a contribution to make it better for me. You know, when I changed to that combination, trying them out, and that combination of, of uh, the A solo, I, I, I didn't like so much the Il Canone A string. So I, I, I don't know, it was a little bit numb for my ears somehow, in the high, higher register. And when you play on the higher register, of course, I want to have also the bright sound, because a lot of virtuoso things happen on, on the higher A string. And the clearness of it, I liked very much. And, and, and I, also, I always came back to the, to the normal solo medium. And, and, and it's blending well with, a, with a going from the D string to the A string in sound. There's no interruption, so I can make the lines like, like uh, I, I, I want to. The string gives me that possibility. And uh, right away, this blending also in combination with playing the fifths in tune. You know, that's very important. Sometimes when you have a, a different kind of string, the, the fifths are in a different way. But this is very faithful for me. And especially also in chamber music, when you play in lower positions, those things, they have to, you have to deliver as a player. You said, no, no, I have to practice more. No, you have to deliver, you have to know. You have to know your strings and they're very faithful. And I, the combination of that is just, it's completely perfect. And there's no difference uh, whether I have this on the C and G string or G and, and, and D string. I know on the A string and D string I have to turn my finger like that. I know that. It, regardless what kind of uh, um, um, differentiation I have in, in Larsen solo or, or, or Il Canone, it's just Larsen strings, Larsen in, in, in himself. It's always on that instrument I have to turn like that. D and, 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 and G string, it's always a little bit like this. And when I play on the C and G string, it's the finger straight. It probably also has to do with the ability of pressing, because I feel when the fingers that don't press enough, it changes the intonation. And my first finger is pressing in a different way than the second finger. So I have a fifth with the second finger over the first finger. It also might change a little bit the direction of it. It's the ability of fingers. Also, also we have this kind of curve here when the, the last joint starts and the fifths are ending up in that curve. If somebody has a different shape of fingertip, it, it's different in, 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 in the turning around for play, playing really clean fifths. But everybody knows his fingers. And then you have to know what can my finger do, how strong is my finger, and how much can I press. It has nothing to do with dynamics of the bow. It's just the pressing itself of the left hand, which determines that, that, or that, or this or that. And you have to know that. You see, I have to play a fifth on the C and C string. And the finger is straight for me. So, so when I play that here, I really have to turn like this. It straights like this. It's because of my finger with that combination of the string. I know it's on one. See, I have to play. If my finger knows, it's a thing, thing of my brain. I have to think about it. I have to know. It's coming. Okay, do this. Next fifth, I have to do like this. And so I, I just have to know it and, and do it. Strength and muscles must be in good shape, though. I must depend on that. The cello playing is it's athletic, so there's no way not to, to, to use those things. We need the muscles. We need the flexibility. And that affects, of course, the, 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 the intonation with fifths. Other double stops as well, but fifths are specially, of course. But the mixture of those, those strings is just, it's, it's, it's for sound, it's for feeling of the fingers, and for, for me it's the perfect mixture. A, Larsen, solo. D is direct and focused. That's the warm string, <laughs> warm and broad. And this is again a little bit more focused, direct and focused. And this, that, that fits my, my playing, that's the way I lead my bow, that's the way I feel uh, weight in the sound or also pressure, it, it depends what, what I need. I found out though that the G string, which I don't play for very long yet, I changed maybe three months ago or so, I changed it, that, this, that, that string doesn't like too much pressure. This string leads a, a, less, a less pressure than it sounds.
sounds better if I do this. It's, it's not the sound I, I, I like, generally. Of course, sometimes in the music it needs something else, but generally speaking, the, the warm string needs less pressure. Not much, but it's, you know, so my ear tells me, you know, press a little less and then it's, it's just fine. But the, the, this string and this one are really supposed to be I, I can use a lot of pressure, but if it's too much pressure, I also have to make my weight flow in. Here, here I don't have weight, so here I need pressure. So it depends also where I am with my bow. But that makes the whole set even in sound as a basis. If the music tells me make their sforzato or do something else, then the music does not need evenness. The music demands do something else, so the string must deliver that too. But I think many strings can do that, but to have this evenness and in flowing, a melody line is usually not just on one string, so the strings have to melt and blend into each other. And then, I, especially the character of a certain piece, so I can, I, I can make that blending in, or if the music tells me do something else, the string also delivers easily. Um, what are your experience about duration of the strings? Um, Actually, very, very good, except the A string. <laughs> I talked to my other, other musicians and also my students after a while. She said, it sounds so metallic. And so was, was this my, something wrong with my playing sound? No, how old is your string? Uh, maybe six months or a year or something. Hmm. Okay, this is a problem for, for the A string. So the A string, actually, the duration is maybe, I think, the real quality after three months, it's not really that good anymore. When you play longer notes and legato, it doesn't show that much, but it shows very much in a little shorter notes or, or when you use more pressure with the bow, then it starts closing up the sound and it sounds a little bit metallic and the pizzicato has no quality sound anymore and short notes, they're squeaking right away. Uh, but the other strings, the duration of, is fantastic. Uh, you can play actually until they break. <laughs> Sometimes there's some pieces where you really have to bump down and hack on the string. Then of course they, they don't last that long, but actually they, you can trust them. They, they sound for very long, very good quality. And, but of course you have to have a second thing in your case, second string always, but the duration is it's, it's very, 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 very good, very reliable and really excellent. A string, it's a little tear in the eye, but once you put it on, the tear is gone. The sun is shining again. You have a creamy sound and you have a strong sound. As, as much as you want, C string, the, the A string delivers right away a good sound. And that string is not that, that expensive, so we can afford it. So it's just a little tiny, a little tiny tear. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Could we talk a little bit about, about sound? We talked about long notes and uh, especially, especially response is such a key uh, yes. situation. Yes, yeah. it's a key it's thing, like, yes. You know, a couple of years ago, I, I was playing the Kodai Opus 4 sonata. I was preparing that sonata, which, which starts with a cello on the C string. And, and I was very unhappy because it never, the string never responded the way I wanted to. It was always kind of a little scratchy in the sound and I had to press a little bit until the strings really came to its full sound in the range of piano, full, I mean. Um, and, 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 and then I tried to change the contact point and the speed of the bow, the pressure and, and, and all this and between bridge and, and, and fingerboard change those places and I, was, I couldn't find the places. After playing it four times, then I found it. But you know, in the concert we have just one try. And so yeah, I must be able to rely on the string. And, and, and so that, that's actually the way I, I found the Il Canone because when I tried that string out, I said, oh my God, <laughs> that it really works. For example, this, the, that piece starts with this low C sharp. Uh, this, uh, it starts, the C string responds right away. Uh, not responding sounds like this. And then it takes, but then it's there. And this, I'm allergic to that, because music is not like that, you know. It's, uh, from then on, develop. It's, in the range of pianissimo, a good warm focus in the sound, not dirt, no fog. If I want it for musical reasons, yes, fine. 
then, then I don't have to take care of it. Then it's also easier to play. But, but this is a and the lines continue from then on. So I want to continue from beauty, not from dirt. And then after the second or third no, then finally, oh, uh -huh, okay. And the people in the audience say, oh, that's good. I, that's why it sounds like that. If somebody noticed that, says, oh, no, it's modern music. No, it's bullshit. It has nothing to do with that. So it's, we need this, uh, this right away speaking, in which the sound is calm and kind of not moving in its beauty not moving and then of course it has to develop to something else um, now i have to make this i need tension in my hand so no not good so let's continue something else, but the next note uh, again must speak, uh, because the ball is in the air, now it must speak, I must be able to rely, uh, that it immediately sounds like they not, not like this. So I have to a new start, uh, and go back to the beginning sound. Yet, but uh, if, I, if I come back, it starts again, again, pause, uh, starting a little higher on the scale, then changing on the G string, the relaxed sound, and moving up its crescendo. sound so without vibrato again and now I want to go on different F and changing from C G string B e string so it's a big range of dynamic change scope on sound I can uh, achieve but I want to start out of nothing with beauty and that C string is corresponding so well right away which I really love. I was playing uh, a lot of things on the low string but I also want to show something which a color can do on the on the higher A string not just kind of virtuoso thing but a, a, a color thing. Uh, Sofia Gubadulina wrote a piece it's called In Croce it's for Bayan and Cello and there is at the end there's a very high passage and she writes flautando and you think um, okay you play F sharp F F natural <laughs> How to play that flautando, just kind of just soft, or what do you do? So I'm looking for colors, and co by coincidence, my bow somehow it ended up here. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling, oh, it sounds like a palm flute. Uh, like, you yeah, have this sound changing to flando. So it needs a certain speed and a certain uh, place of the bow. It's very much up here. I need to be careful but not with the bow to bump to this um, place of, of the instrument, but exactly there lives that sound. And with the Larsen string, it's very easy to do, actually. Some strings can, cannot do that sound at all. It's just kind of sounding like this, but not having a certain character. I uh, like this pan flute sound. 
insisting that's in major and this is in minor so she's intending something with this and it's a goddamn responsibility of us players to look around on the instrument where it does lift the sound and the strings do it do that together with the instrument of course but it's a tricky thing because the bow has to find the right speed it's the right speed the right place i cannot do it down here no it has to be upper bow and it needs a fast bow with two hairs and a rather speedy. This is a normal. So this is beauty of color. Wonderful. Not always focused. On no, there's sometimes, yes, but not always like this. And color, again, on the low strings, of course, you know, what is an audience expecting from cellists? A creamy, dark, beautiful, ooh, sound. Yes, that's what people love with cello playing. Not so much just circus-like stuff, virtuoso things. Cellists love it, and they, of course, we need this circus of doing virtuoso stuff as well. But beauty of sound, low strings, warm sound, which touches our soul. And I think a very good example is the beginning of the Isai solo sonata, which also starts in, 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 in C minor. It starts with open strings. Also the register on the low strings, but he's going over all the strings and everything has to deliver its sound, its possibilities of making the arpeggio. And the bass note is very important at the beginning. It always comes back to that. The creamy C string, and this is actually beautiful. But not every string can do that. Creamy, beautiful, touchy cello sound. Like we all know this. Uh... Everybody falls in love with a cello <laughs> hearing this. So that's the beauty of it. <laughs> 